Hello friends, welcome again. Today we are going to discuss about solubility rules. In this video, I shall explain you which compounds are water soluble and which compounds are water insoluble. This will help us to predict whether a given reaction is a precipitation reaction or not. So let's get started. So I have written here two reactions. In the first reaction, ICL is combining with the NaOH and product to form it is NaCl and water. In second reaction, sulfuric acid combines with NaOH and product to form is sodium sulfate. So both these compounds, NaCl and sodium sulfate, these are water soluble. On the other hand, if I have these two reactions, silver nitrate is combining with HCl, the product to form is silver chloride. Here I have shown arrow down, that means this silver chloride which is formed in this reaction, it is water insoluble compound, it gets deposited in the form of precipitate. So hence arrow is shown down. Similarly in this reaction calcium chloride when treated with ammonium carbonate the product form is calcium carbonate. This calcium carbonate is also water insoluble and it gets deposited in the form of precipitate. So in these two reactions precipitate is formed because one of the compounds formed that is water insoluble. Whereas in these two reactions the compounds are water soluble. But the question is how we will come to know whether the given compound is water insoluble or water soluble. If it is water insoluble, then it will get deposited in the form of precipitate. So we must be having knowledge about solubility rules. So whether the product form is insoluble appears as a precipitate or not, it can be checked only from the knowledge of solubility rules. Now I am going to tell you what are the solubility rules which will help us to predict whether the given compound is water soluble or water insoluble. Solubility rules. So what are these rules? Rule number one. All nitrates, acetates, chlorates, perchlorates and ammonium salts and alkali metal salts are water soluble. So all these compounds are soluble in water. Rule number next. All the sulfates are water soluble with few exceptions like lead sulfate, mercury sulfate, silver sulfate, barium sulfate, calcium sulfate and citronium sulfate. Next rule, all halogen compounds are water soluble with few exceptions like lead, mercury and silver. That means lead halide, mercury halide and silver halide, these are water insoluble. And all sulfide and hydroxide compounds are water insoluble with few exceptions like barium, calcium and strontium. So I will tell you a trick with the help of which you can remember which compounds are water soluble and which are water insoluble. So the trick is this, the soluble compounds are NAG SAG, NAG NAG, SAG SAG. So what does it mean? NAG SAG, N stands for nitrates, A stands for acetates. You can also include chlorates and perchlorates in this group. G stands for group 1, that means all the compounds of group 1 are water soluble. S stands for sulfates, all sulfates are water soluble. A stands for ammonium, all ammonium salts are soluble and this G stands for group 17 that means halogens, all halogen compounds are water soluble. Okay, now I am telling you exceptions, is there any exception? In case of nitrates, no exception, that means all nitrate compounds are soluble. In case of acetates, chlorates, pulchrates, again there is no exception, that means all these compounds are water soluble. In case of group 1, there is again no exception. In case of Sulfates, we have exception BSC and MSP. So what does BSC mean? BSC means barium, S stands for strontium and C stands for calcium. So barium sulfate, BSC, B stands for barium, S stands for strontium and C stands for calcium. So barium sulfate, strontium sulfate and calcium sulfate, these are water insoluble. As similarly, we have MSP. What does MSP mean? M means mercury, S means silver, P means lead. So these compounds are also water insoluble in case of sulfates. And in case of ammonium salts, we have no exception. As per halogens are concerned, we have MSP exception. What does MSP mean? Mercury, silver and lead. Mercury halide, silver halide and lead halide are water insoluble. So these compounds, NAG, SAG compounds are water soluble. The only exception is in case of sulfates and group 17. In case of sulfates, the exceptions are BSC and MSP. While in case of halogens, there are three exceptions that's MSP, mercury, silver and lead. Okay, you have to find which of these compounds is water insoluble. 
and accordingly that will get deposited in the form of precipitate. So first is barium nitrate. We know all nitrates are soluble. So barium nitrate is water soluble. Silver nitrate again water soluble. Ammonium nitrate again water soluble. Okay, next is hydroxides. Since hydroxides are insoluble, but it belongs to group one. It is sodium hydroxide. Sodium belongs to group one and group one are soluble. So it is again soluble. As per ammonium hydroxide is concerned, we know compounds of the ammonium are water soluble. So it is again water soluble. Copper hydroxide, since hydroxides are insoluble, so it is insoluble. Aluminium perchlorate, again soluble. Potassium perchlorate, again soluble. Sodium chlorate, again soluble because group first. Lead chloride, since halogen compounds are soluble, but exceptions are MSP, mercury, silver, and lead. So it is lead chloride, it is insoluble. Okay, silver chloride, so silver is also exception, insoluble. Ammonium chloride, ammonium compounds are soluble. Mercury chloride, halides of mercury are insoluble. Okay, silver estate, all estates are soluble, so it is soluble. Calcium estate, soluble. Lead estate, soluble. Ammonium, compounds of the ammonium are soluble, it is again soluble. Calcium carbonate, carbonates are insoluble. Magnesium carbonate, again insoluble. So we have sodium sulfide, sulfides are insoluble, but sodium belongs to group first, so it is water soluble. Again, potassium belongs to group first, so it is water soluble. Calcium sulfide, so it is insoluble. Calcium phosphate, phosphates are again insoluble. Sodium phosphate, sodium belongs to group first, so water soluble. Aluminium phosphate, it is insoluble. Ammonium phosphate, ammonium compounds are soluble. Magnesium iodide, so halides are soluble. Silver iodide, so again insoluble, because silver is an exception in case of halides. Lead, lead is again exception. Insoluble barium sulfate, so barium is also exception. In case of sulfates, calcium sulfate, iron sulfate, it is water soluble. Sodium chromate, chromates are insoluble, sodium belongs to group first, so water soluble. Aluminium chromate, so it is again water insoluble. Potassium chromate, soluble because potassium belongs to group first. Potassium iodide, soluble. Silver bromide, halides of silver, silver is exception, so insoluble. Zinc chloride, water soluble and zinc sulfate, again water soluble. Okay, using knowledge of the solubility rules, you have to predict in which of these reactions the product formed is an insoluble precipitate. That is, which among these reactions is an precipitation reaction. So first reaction is chromium chloride when treated with NaOH. So chromium will combine with the OH, it will form chromium hydroxide. Since chromium hydroxide is insoluble compound, so it is a precipitation reaction. It will appear in the form of precipitate. Okay, second reaction. Calcium will combine with the fluorine and it will form calcium chloride. And K will combine with the chlorine, it will form calcium chloride. Since halides are soluble, so no precipitation will take place in this reaction. As per third reaction is concerned, here bismuth will combine with the sulfur and it will form bismuth sulfide. Since sulfides are insoluble, so it is a precipitation reaction and bismuth sulfide will appear in the form of precipitate. Okay, as per reaction number fourth is concerned, here lead will combine with Cl and it will form lead chloride. We know lead chloride is an insoluble compound. So again, it is a precipitation reaction and lead chloride will appear in the form of precipitate. As per fifth reaction is concerned, barium will combine with the chromate. It will form barium chromate, which is insoluble compound. So it will appear in the form of precipitate. Number six reaction, magnesium oxide when treated with sulfuric acid, it will form magnesium sulfate and water. So both these are soluble compound. So none of the precipitate is formed in this reaction. Number seventh reaction, lead acetate when treated with H2S. Okay, here product formed is acetic acid and lead will combine with the sulfur and we will get lead sulfide. And lead sulfide is an insoluble compound. It will appear in the form of precipitate. So it is a precipitation reaction. And we have potassium fluoride when treated with calcium chloride. So both the products are here, halides, which are soluble. No precipitation will take place. And lastly, we have sodium hydroxide when treated with phosphoric acid. It will form sodium phosphate and water. So sodium phosphate and water, both are soluble compounds. So no precipitation will take place in this reaction. Okay, if you want to know the order of the solubility of the various compounds, if you are moving across the period or if you are moving from top to bottom, that means down the group in a periodic table. So you can watch my video on solubility trends. So thanks for watching this video.